Hi, beautiful people. Um, I'm going to share a recipe with you today that's really fun to make during the holidays. I have my some of my little Christmassy stuff here on the counter. Um, this is full of different kinds of hot cocoa, which I can't drink, but if I have company over, there's four different flavors in there. And um, this is my granddaughter's favorite flavor of candy canes, and I think it makes this guy look like he has a really cute hairdo. So and these were all like gifts from my students through the years and the little teapot. They decided that I had a snowman theme, so I enjoyed it. One of the things I'm excited about is that this is going to be the first chance to share with you cooking with my new stove. Now I promise guys we're going to do a video about this, but I love it. We're set up with propane now. Man, I love this stove. So it's going to be fun cooking on it today. And I wanted to tell you that, yes, indeed, I do realize it's a different stove than you usually see. So the kitchen's coming along and I'm really enjoying it. Well, hi, this is Elizabeth with Live Simple, Live Free. And today I am um, make, baking um, some inc really incredibly good uh, Black Forest brownies that I think would be just lovely for Christmas. They have a ganache on top and they've got black, they got the cherries in them. Um, and uh, it, this is such a neat, neat kind of a brownie to serve for the holidays. So one of the f first things that I I'm going to go ahead and get started on um, are my cherries. And for this time of year, I am honestly really grateful that I have my, um, yeah, so you can tell this has been used, my Thrive, uh, Thrive Life. These are like premium freeze-dried sweet cherries. Um, I don't have to worry about what season of the year it is to be able to know that I'm going to have really wonderful cherries. I want to show you here, they have exactly one ingredient. See if I can get that where you guys can really see it. And it's just sweet cherries. So what I've done is I've got a cup of them that I have now put into a bowl um, because you know they are freeze dried and a bowl. And then I put in a half a cup of water. And that's the first thing I did because I want these to sit and really get soaky for a while. Uh, and then I'll kind of mash them up a little bit in there. And the really fun thing is that I will put the cherries as a layer in the brownies, but there'll be this wonderful juice left over, and that is going in my ganache. Cool, huh? Okay, now before we start actually mixing the brownies, I want to get my oven turned on and preheating. And yes, there is a hole in the wall. This kitchen's not done yet. It will be. <laughs> so bake, and then 350 and it'll preheat and let me know when it's heated. I love this stove, cool. Now I'm gonna try to do this like a real cooking show. So I had fun getting all these little things ready. Let me go ahead and give you the ingredients and the amounts and then in the description below, I'll put the recipe so you know the exact amounts. I cook a lot by just what makes it look right and smell right and taste right, but I don't bake that way. <laughs> I need, you know, amounts, so. I want to show you, oh, <laughs> do you hear that? That was the stove telling me that it's preheated. <laughs> I wanted to, to show you the, main, the ingredients that I'm using in the amounts, just like I said, try to do a, a real cooking show, but I'm doing so much better, but I still have a hard time just standing on my feet for a long period of time without getting a little short of breath and not feeling good. So I'm going to sit down and explain a few of these things kind of all at once. And and uh, then when I do the standing part, I won't be quite so tired. I'm fine. Okay. <clears throat> now, I have some dietary issues that um, I have to keep in mind. And so um, I'm modifying these brownies so that I can actually eat them. And, and I don't overdo it. They're very rich and good, but I can eat them. But I'll be telling you all along that any of these ingredients can be substituted for well, for instance, I'm using gluten-free flour. You could use regular all-purpose flour. So let me show you some of these things. Um, first of all, we're going to be using chocolate chips for the ganache. And um, I'm going to put some in the brownies. And uh, there you can see them here. And um, they're actually um, pretty nice sugar-free chocolate chips. I looked a long time to find ones that I thought would work. And these are sugar-free chocolate chips. Um, I'm using 
Um, this is actually a monk fruit um, sweetening. Now, I'm not like diabetic. I'm not diabetic at all, but I'm just staying away from sugar as much as I can, just trying to avoid uh, refined sugars. So um, the monk fruit is wonderful. It gives no aftertaste, but regular sugar could be used. Um, there's some stevia mixtures that I think are wonderful. So um, just anything that would translate to this amount of regular sugar should work just fine. Um, we like the monk fruit. It costs a little bit more, um, but it doesn't seem to have any kind of an aftertaste. And I actually really like stevia. But to Bill, it has a funny, a little bit of a funny flavor. So I thought, well, we'll just use monk fruit. And if he wants to eat some of the stuff that I've made sugar-free like this, then he, he can. And there's, there's no funny taste to him at all. So I have my sugar-free chips and my monk fruit. I have a cup. Well, the the monk fruit actually called for a, I mean, not the monk, well, just, I'll call it sugar. <laughs> the sugar called for a cup and an eighth to make a uh, 12 brownies. I made them ahead of time and I found that to be awfully sweet. So I'm actually using seven eighths of a cup. So you can modify that if you want to. It started out being a cup and an eighth, but I'm using seven eighths of a cup. Um, I just think that it's going to be a little bit less real sweet that way. Okay, so that's what I'm using for those. Now, I got all ready to cook and discovered honestly that I had exactly one egg left. And this actually calls for two large eggs. And I'm telling you, I'm so thankful at times like that. And I'm, I'm telling you, this is absolutely truth. I realized I didn't have eggs. <laughs> I was like, I just want to do this. That's what I'm so glad that I do have my Thrive Life eggs. Um, it, just, I can always cook. I can always bake. Um, I can always make things with these eggs. Um, it only ingredient is there is there's eggs and some egg whites. It's just, it's eggs. Um, they are freeze-dried, and it's, like I said, from the Thrive Life freeze-dried foods that we use. Um, you, um, we have a link below if you'd like more information about Thrive Life. But it takes two tablespoons of the Thrive Life eggs um, to make one egg, two tablespoons of the powder, and three tablespoons of water. Well, that doesn't make a big egg. That makes like a medium egg. So to make this work right, I experimented a little bit and I'm using three eggs worth and it worked out really, really well. So I have six tablespoons of the Thrive Life eggs. I love how that it, Bill says there's no way in the world you could ever compare the powdered eggs he had in the army with these. This just tastes like egg. I mean, it's just egg. In fact, it's a tiny bit shiny. And if you think about it, if you cook an egg uh, over easy, the whites have a shininess on the edges. So um, that's all that's in there. And so I have uh, six tablespoons of the um, Thrive Life powder. And then nine, this is a teaspoon measure cup. Nine, it's a teaspoon, tablespoon measuring cup. Nine tablespoons of water. And I will make my eggs that way. Now, the recipe calls for two large eggs. The recipe also calls for flour. You can use all-purpose flour. I have to go gluten-free. I actually, once again, I'm using my Thrive Life um, gluten-free flour. It is uh, hands down the best gluten-free flour I've ever worked with. And um, I can use it just cup for cup. And I really like the texture. Now, obviously, gluten-free flour is not going to have gluten, which if you're baking bread is significant in terms of developing and kneading the bread, but especially for recipes like this and for most recipes for breading and stuff, I, it works beautifully. Now for Thrive Life, this gluten-free flour is what they call a limited, uh, kind of like a limited edition. And so it's available, but it's not always available. You have to kind of watch out uh, for, for when it's going to be available, but I love having it around. So. I'm been grateful I have both of these. So this is a half a cup and an eighth of a cup. <laughs> um, I cut a big recipe in half, and so it's a half a cup and an eighth of a cup, and you could use regular flour, um, and it would work just fine. Now I can get up and go over and show you the rest of my ingredients. Here are the remaining ingredients then. We have a half a teaspoon of baking powder, we have a half a teaspoon of salt. That's that nice pink Himalayan salt. It's better for you. 
I have a half a cup of um, cocoa. That's actually organic, really nice cocoa powder. I have um, about three-fourths of a cup of some crunched up pecans. And I have one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. And then I've cut up eight tablespoons. That's actually a stick of unsweet, unsalted butter. And except for making the ganache, which I'll explain later, um, that's all of our ingredients. We're going to use an eight by eight pan. And I love my pioneer woman baking stuff. I'm not an affiliate. I'm not affiliated with her at all. I just love her stuff. Now, when I watch online, I learn all sorts of nifty tricks. And I'm going to show you something that's really works out cool for these. Turn your baking dish over and get some aluminum foil because I'm going to want to take these out of the pan uh, and to pour the ganache over it. This works so well. Bring it over just There we go. is already just put in here. And I, when I bake these before, I didn't have any trouble getting the, the foil off the brownies when they're all done. You can also, like, uh, you know, really butter and flour it, um, spray in oil. Um, you can put parchment paper, which is also really excellent. Like I said, I'd like to be able to take them out to, you know, and add the ganache. So, okay, nifty, huh? Uh, that tore a little bit, but fortunately it's at the very top, it won't matter. Okay. <laughs> now to make the brownies come out like nice and shiny, and nice, um, you actually need to do a little bit of the stuff in preparation on the stove. So I'm going to take my, my saucepan here, and I cut this butter up so that it would melt easily. That goes in here. And I'm going to start melting this butter on a low heat and while I'm doing that I'll get the rest of my ingredients going in my bowl here. This is a very this is a very special bowl. It was Bill's mom's. I inherited it from her. <laughs> All right. Nice low flame. And going to start getting that butter melting. Get a nice wooden spoon to stir with. Okay, I won't add the sugar until the butter's melted. Now I want to go ahead and put together um, the rest of my ingredients and start it mixing. So we are going to put in our eggs, which means I add my egg powder and the appropriate amount of water. Voila! Eggs. <laughs> and I'm looking at a recipe here. I'm not ashamed of that. Um, and my cocoa. Man, I love this Polish pottery. It's fun to use it. Okay. Um, my half a teaspoon of salt. My half a teaspoon of baking powder. and my one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Now, I'm gonna use my hand mixer. Boy, I love this thing. Not only is it good for prepping in case electricity is out, but it just does a really good job here. Now, I'm gonna do this a little bit slowly at first because if I started making this thing move really fast, I would be covered in a fine coat of cocoa powder. So this way I'm gonna get it started. And this is supposed to be mixed um, until it's nice and smooth. Man, I love how easy this thing works. Like I said, it's nice to know I've got something that's going to do a good job, even if for some reason I lost electricity. You know, we're preppers after all. Mm, smells good already. All right, I'm going to take a quick peek at my butter. Not quite melted, but it's doing a good job getting there. 
Okay, so I'm going to try to get this nice and smooth. Notice I keep scraping the sides down. <laughs> oh yeah, that's just coming together beautifully. Okay, so this is the eggs, the cocoa, the salt, the baking powder, and the vanilla. Oh, look how beautiful that is. <laughs> oh, and it just smells so good. This butter has now melted enough that I can add my sugar right into it. Now, I want to keep this over a low heat and stir it constantly um, until it, feel, it seems like it's really kind of dissolved and it needs to become shiny. And that's one of the things that gives us a kind of a beautiful shiny crust on our brownies. So let's just give this a chance here to heat up a little bit and get kind of nice and shiny. This is getting there. Um, you don't want it to boil. Okay, but see how it's getting kind of a shiny, nice shiny texture? I think that's good. Okay. I love how on a gas stove when the heat's off, it's off. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to add it, this beautiful mixture, add it to my other mixture over here. Mm. There's only one way to make chocolate that much better, and that's to add sweetening and butter. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to keep my spoon here handy because I think ultimately I'm going to do some mixing with the spoon. Once again, I'm going to kind of mix it in. And you just want to put these together until they're smooth. And you notice it's a little liquidy. Well, that's good because we still got flour to put in here. And the, the beaters come off and wash so easy on this. Okay, oh, look at that. Smooth and beautiful. All right. I am going to mix in the flour with, um, there we go, with my spoon. All right, now at this point then, we're going to add in the flour. I'm going to do a little bit at a time. Blend it in. <laughs> of course, it has to go everywhere a little bit. I was up visiting my sister in Maine, and they had a little craft thing at their firehouse in the little town she lives in in Maine. And uh, this little handmade apron for Christmas was up there, and that's where I got this apron. I just love it. <laughs> okay, there's the rest of my flour. And I, like I said, I don't think I want to use the beater on this. I'm just going to mix it in nice and smooth. And then we have a couple more things to add, and we're good to go. You ready to bake it? Ah, yes, that's getting lovely. You want to be sure all of the flour is incorporated so you don't get little dry patches. Yeah, there we go. All right, I'm going to add my pecans. You can add whatever kind of nuts you want. I love pecans in it. And I am going to add my chocolate chips. There we go. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Okay. All right. Now, this is what I'm going to do here. I've got my cherries and I'm going to get a slotted spoon. I actually just went and sat down and rested for a minute. <laughs> so I'm back ready to finish this. Um, I did go ahead and rinse off my beater. Um, just rinse it off. It's so easy to clean if you do it right away. All right, let's finish this. Now I'm going to put half of the batter in my lined baking dish here. And of course, you don't have to use nuts. You don't have to put in chocolate chips. 
Um, you could use different kinds of nuts or different flavors of chocolate chips. These are semi-sweet. There's a lot of different possibilities. Okay, smooth this out into all the corners. I've been really, uh, it, it's been nice to know I've been able to make these um, with just stuff I have in my own pantry, except for I went and got the chocolate chips. The rest of the stuff I just kind of keep in my own pantry. All right, now I mashed these up. Beautiful cherries here. Now I'm using a slotted spoon, so as I lay the cherries on top, I'm going to let a lot of the liquid kind of drain off. Um, I don't want to like completely drain them. I like to have a little bit of the moisture with them, but I don't want them too moisture. It's going to affect the baking of the brownies. And then I've got definite plans for the juice. Here we go. So just put in a layer of the beautiful cherries there. Only a tiny bit more now. Okay, now I've got this beautiful, rich juice left. Let's save that. All right, this is what makes them Black Forest. <laughs> okay, now just gently plop this on top. And I just want to try to cover the cherries. Um, it doesn't have to be super perfect. But just want to kind of cover them over. There we go. I'm used to not being able to eat a lot of the desserts for holidays because, you know, I, I really don't want to have the gluten or all that sugar. So I got to admit, this is a pretty major treat for me to be able to have some of these. Like I said, they're rich, so you don't want to have too much of it anyway because it's so rich and good. But it's a, quite a treat. So, all right, a little smoothing over. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes I just uncover something as much as I cover it, but that always happens when you're trying to smooth something over. There we go. All right. All right, pop them in my 350 oven, and I'm going to set a timer for a half an hour. And we'll let them bake. Look who just came to say hi, and she's going to help me finish up. <laughs> Carly, my granddaughter, is going to help me finish up these wonderful Christmas uh, Black Forest brownies. I'm thrilled to have her. I think this is so much fun. <laughs> so she'll help me. All right. I took uh, the brownies out of the oven, and uh, after a half an hour, I felt like that it was a little too soft um, because these are a little tricky to check because they've got the fruit in the middle. So I gave them like three more minutes, but I just don't want to do more than that because it's so easy for these to accidentally start getting overcooked. So if I look at the edges, they, with clean hands, see the, the top, it feels a little mushy, but I think it's fine. They're supposed to be not liquidy, but you know, nice and, and soft. So I'm going to try flipping this over onto a plate and let's see what happens. It's cooled off a little bit, by the way. I'm not burning my hands. Now, one nice thing about doing this method is look at my nice, clean baking dish. <laughs> and just put it away. Do it real gently and carefully, Carly, or we'll start breaking into pieces. Yeah, lift it up a little bit at a time. There we go. Oh. Gorgeous! Look at that. And if you look right here, a little bit of those yummy cherries kind of gushing out. <laughs> so, my hands are freshly washed. Yeah, see? They're not overdone, but they're definitely not gooey. You know, not, not still, you know, batter. Um, that was from my oven, anyway. My new gorgeous oven. Um, that was 30 minutes and then three more in it, so 33 minutes total. Okay, 
that's going to do a little bit more cooling but let's start doing the ganache okay i, I think ganache is wonderful and this is going to be made with like gluten-free sugar-free um uh, chocolate chips and their uh, semi-sweet chocolate and some cream um, ganache is nice because it it forms a kind of a, a frosting kind of thing here that'll set a little bit it's still creamy but it kind of gets a set texture to it and um, I think it's really wonderful so what I'm gonna do is if you want to do this Carly um, put these up into the microwave and let's just give them like let's start with you can have one <laughs> let's start with like a good 20 seconds I don't want to overdo it and there's the start button right there good they don't have to all be completely melted there just has to be enough of them that have some heat in them and it started to melt then you finish stirring and it finishes melting so okay now let me see what it's doing here all right. All right. Give it 30 more seconds at this point. So I'm not going to use as much cream. I've got a... <laughs> you see nothing. <laughs> I have a, <laughs> a nice full cup of the um, chips, chocolate chips. I've got... Um, I just use this because it was handy. This is... Um, cream uh, 10 tablespoons of cream okay good now if you look at the texture here it's getting mushy now watch what happens when I get a spoon and I start to store to, start to store to, it to stir. where are you gonna store it I'm stirring okay see it doesn't have to be melted any more than that this will keep keep it shiny um, but it'll finish you can stir that Carly that will finish melting just by stirring it. You can sit down over here and stir. <laughs> and then we will put in some cherry juice and the cream and it forms this wonderful pourable stuff for the top. It's gonna be good. Now, if you look here, yep, beautiful melted, uh, sugar-free, gluten-free <laughs> chocolate chips. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and carefully I don't want to necessarily use all of this but just enough to give it some of the flavor I'm just gonna pour some in there there we go that's the, the natural cherry juice mmm yum so a full cup of the chocolate yeah now I'm gonna add in cream here we go and because these set when they get back to room temperature, um, and it'll look like it's not going to mix at first, but it does. Was that milk cold? Uh huh. It's okay. It'll still it'll still mix in as long as we keep it stirring. Maybe I'll heat up the rest of the cream. Yeah. But you can still stir that in because the and chocolate's maybe, all melted. Maybe heat the chocolate up a little bit more. Okay, we could do that. Because. Maybe a little, like, try some more. Here, set the spoon kind of carefully back in here. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. It, it'll be melt. It'll be warm enough. <laughs> All right, back in the microwave for like, 15 seconds. Uh, that's 30, but we'll turn it off. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. Hit the stop button. 15. All right. Boom. That should have warmed up a little. Now let me take a look at it here. All right. That flavored up the spoon with a little bit more of the cherry juice. <gasps> yeah, this is going to be just fine. It does. It looks like it's got way too much cream, but it doesn't. Once this is really blended, and I may add a little bit more. It's. It needs to be gently pourable. There we go. And see the chocolate's not incorporated yet. So when it is, okay. Okay. Just, that's good. 
spoon. Okay, here's the spoon. So it may have been a little bit easier if you heat up the milk and then you added the chocolate and then you added the um, cherry juice there. Just just for just for future reference. And then you'd have the chocolate dissolving straight into the milk instead of getting that weird reaction when you put liquid into chocolate. My very smart granddaughter is absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> when I did this before, somehow it worked when I melted the chocolate and added cream. But she's absolutely right. If we had heated the cream, and I'm actually using half and half. A lot of times people recommend using 100% you know full cream but um if you had if i had heated the cream and then put the chocolate in it it would have melted the chocolate and then i could add a teeny bit of the cherry juice do you have a whisk yes i have a whisk right there to your right oh hey yep i'm so glad you came over dear did you learn something <laughs> yes i did indeed and it looks like we're using a cup of chocolate chips and about a half a cup of cream and just a dribble of the sherry juice. That's okay, it cleans up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Tastes good. The whisk is a good idea. <laughs> I added the rest of the cherry juice and it's a little bit thinner, but it tastes a lot better. And I'm just gonna pour it over. Oh, yum. Beautiful. And of course, um, later on when that gives a chance, I might put it in the fridge for a little bit and give it a chance to set. Um, it's going to be so good. You see nothing? <laughs> I got it on film. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to let this cool a little bit, and then um, we're going to try it, of course. And then um, I do want to show you one idea I have uh, to make it look more festive, which I can't eat, but you'd be able to. All righty, we'll be back. Okay, this has cooled a little bit. Uh, you can tell the tempering was good on the chocolate because it's shiny. And uh, Carly kind of cleaned the sides up, you know, kind of tried to make it look nicer. It's still, of course, going to be kind of soft because it's, it's ganache. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece for Carly and then show you how we can fix it up. <laughs> how we can fix it up to um, make it look even a little bit more Christmassy. And I, I'm trying, like I said, I'm not diabetic, but I'm just trying to keep away from sugar. But um, a person could do their whole brownies with these ideas. And I'll show you how we're going to decorate at least one brownie and see if we can give that to Carly. Here we go. Oh, it looks so good. Now I'll show you what it looks like on the side. Oh, yum. See the ganache and the brownie and then the cherries right there. Mm. All right, let's fix this up for you, Carly. And of course, you can fix yours up this way if you like. I'm just going to... Um, not do it to all of them. That way I can enjoy one too. Yeah. Okay. This is also going to look like the fancy cooking shows. Except for, of course, I got it all over my bread box. <laughs> nah, okay. That's the now, important part. Now we're just going to tap a little snow on top. And we can do some of this too because Bill's allowed to have it. Oh, how pretty. Okay. Okay, I'll it later. Now, isn't that beautiful? Okay, all right. <laughs> now, we're going to take a candy cane. What flavor is it, Carly? Mint chocolate. Yeah, it's Carly's. It's going to be interesting with the cherry. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look at it. It's perfect. Anyway, uh, we're just going to use some little crumbled pieces of a candy cane. That's a clean cutting board. Eesh. Now, okay, so it's a little more festive because it's got some powdered sugar, um, and often called confectioner sugar, and just a little bit of crumbled up candy cane on top. We'll see what Carly thinks of this. You can wash your hands off on mm -hmm. mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what Carly thinks about this. Uh, 
That is definitely interesting. I love that. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Okay, <laughs> good. I got a little bite for me. Mm. That's really good. It's very chocolatey. The cherries just add this little wonderful tart flavor. Oh, that's really good. Rich, but really good. <laughs> Are you still gonna eat your supper? Probably. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> thanks for joining us. I think this is gonna make a really fun dessert for Christmas time. And she seems to be still eating it, so. Anyway, thank you for joining us, and I just pray everybody has a wonderful holiday and Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. And, um, the, any information about the Thrive Life food, um, there is a link below. So really with the Thrive Life, the least expensive way is on orders of more than $100, $100 or more. Um, with the delivery, the monthly delivery service, um, it is free shipping, which is 12%, and it's 15% off of the retail price. So that's like 27% off. That's nice. So, alrighty. Well, thanks for joining us today. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Listen, we love you guys. Live simple. Live free. <laughs> and drink water and don't be stupid. And Advice for the day. Okay, and be blessed. <laughs> we love you guys. We'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. I have ordered Thrive many times, especially the apple slices and the strawberry ones. Oh man, what a wonderful thing they are. If anyone was ever on the fence, pull out that card and order. You won't regret it. This is from Jason Stover. My grandkids just love Thrive Life Fruits. They devoured several cans last year on one of their home visits with us. I was so pleased they loved it that much. Thanks, Bill, for introducing me to this awesome company selling real food, Diane Brezzo.